Hi there, my name is Martin Hoxley and today I want to talk to you about MOOCs, Massive Open Online Courses. In particular, I want to talk about a particular type of MOOC. Um, currently there are two strands forming. You've got the Instructivist um, style of MOOC which has been popularised by sites like Coursera and Udacity which is very much about taking uh, a centralised approach. So you have a single site of content, of quizzes, of discussion forums, and people come together to take a course there. But there's another type of MOOC. There's the Connectivist MOOC. And this is a very much a decentralised approach. So you still have um, a central website, but with some um, seed content, but the idea is that students and participants um, learn in their own personal spaces, so in Twitter or blogs. Um, so it's a very distributed uh, model, and this is what it looks like. And all these blog posts and discussion posts, video responses, articles, tweets, and tags all knit together to create a networked course. They're mostly not found in one central location, but rather all over the internet in different pockets and clusters. There's no right way to do the course, no single path from the first week to the last. This allows for new ideas to develop and for different points of views to coexist. It also means that one of the side effects of a MOOC is the building of a distributed knowledge base on the net. There, there is an, a, an architecture forming around these types of MOOCs, um, where they're taking blogs, information from learning management systems, social bookmarking to a degree, and um, Twitter and other social media. And it's all being compiled together in a black box. Um, examples of the black boxes that are emerging are specific tools like um, Grasshopper, developed by Stephen Downs. What these tools do is they pull the, together the information, they pull together the data, and then the tutor has tools to filter some of that data out highlight some meaning and then distribute it to students. So usually a, a daily email or an RSS feed where they can get an overview of the activity that's going on. And in some cases like Grasshopper, there's an opportunity to com comment on the content being pulled together there. So what I want to do is actually look at enhancing this to look at how feeds from learning management systems, social bookmarking, how data from Twitter can be all pulled into an enhanced black box. Building on this black box requires to um, be able to defragment some of the data better, to actually provide some sort of analytics layer to it. Um, so the box gets bigger, and as the box gets bigger, you need better and bigger filters to actually pull out some of the meaning from it. And instead of a generic daily alert, why not a personalized daily alert that's actually identifying the particular areas of this distributed network that might be of interest to you? So how can I do this? Well, I'm interested in social network analysis, and network analysis seems an ideal tool to start analyzing what's going on in these distributed networks. So it's taking complex diagrams like this one, and turning them into simple answers that um, tutors can use, that participants can use to give them some more direction, wayfinding in the chaos. Also, I think it's about building on the existing tools. I've already mentioned Feed WordPress and Grasshopper, which are great tools, um, but I think they could be improved. And also looking at the existing channels being used, like Twitter uh, and Google Analytics, and again looking at what can be done, what recipes, um, what little tricks can be used to actually get more from these. And it's also looking at new things as well. Um, I develop a lot of Google spreadsheets and these potentially could be used to feed in uh, to a, a MOOC black box to enhance the data that's being flowed through. And AppScript again, which kind of ties into Google Spreadsheet. The benefit of AppScript is that it's a cloud-based scripting language that anyone can have access to and you don't have to pay for it. And also there are lots of APIs out there. Um, services that you can push data in and get some meaning back out of. So for example there are sites that you can use to get sentiment analysis. Just by pushing in some text it will come back with some responses. Again these would feed into the black box and be processed in a way to give more meaning. Finally, why? 
I'll leave that to George Siemens.